This is uh, my dream car, a 2018 Mercedes AMG C63S. If you follow this channel, you uh, have seen plenty of videos of this car already, but in today's upload, we're actually gonna do a proper review of the car. Because during the time that I've had it, I haven't really done a review of this specific car like I have many other cars on the channel. So I thought that today would be the perfect opportunity. And maybe if you're in the market for a C63, hopefully this video can help you out. So in September, it'll be two years that I've had this car. It actually has 21,000 miles on it now. We've been on uh, several road trips in the car. We've had our ups and downs during the ownership experience. So this video will be more of an owner's review where we talk about the uh, pros and the cons, although it's 99.9% .9 pros. And also the fact that, uh, it's tough to say, but it might be time to get rid of the car. Either sell it or trade it in. Because as much as I would want, which is keep this car forever, I do want to be able to experience other cars in my life. So uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's the last video ever, but it, it might be one of the last ones of my beloved uh, Mercedes AMG C63S. So since this is an AMG, I thought that we would of course start with talking about what makes it an AMG, and that is the heart of the beast, the four liter bi-turbo V8 that you now find across the board for all the 63 models in the AMG lineup, the C, the E, and the S. They are just tuned differently. Now a C63, you can buy in two versions, the 63 and then the 63S. Not that many enormous differences between the two. A 63S has dynamic engine mounts, which a regular C63 does not have. It also has more power. This is 503 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque versus 479 in a regular C63. Now this engine is not stock. It's been tuned by my friends at Velos Design Works in Miami. So roundabout crank number, since I have not dynoed this car, is around 630 horsepower. And uh, yeah, it is an absolute monster, very, very fast. And with uh, downpipes from FI, it sounds absolutely insane. Now what's also insane is if you go and buy this car and you don't check the box for the performance exhaust. Now I did just mention that we have downpipes from FI so it does sound uh, a whole lot more but even in stock format it sounds phenomenal. And like I said, the performance exhaust should be a standard feature. It should not be allowed for a potential buyer of this car to not want that feature. Because if you don't want that feature, you don't want an AMG. There is something extremely severely wrong with you. Now in the remaining uh, parts of this video where we talk about the exterior of this car, uh, we'll just do it in traditional walk around fashion because there are uh, several things that we have uh, changed on the car since it was stock. Since we're standing back here, we'll uh, just start with the first mod that I did, which was this spoiler right here that I got from Mode Carbon. And uh, yeah, I'm still in love with it. I love the way it looks. It's in carbon fiber, of course. We've also gotten a uh, carbon fiber rear diffuser from Mode Carbon. That just, it drastically changes up the, the rear end look of the car. And pretty recently, I uh, switched out the uh, AMG badging and the C63 badging. I got some uh, matte black badges from eBay. We got the star wrapped. I'm also on my third wheel setup. These wheels are the S15s from Velos Design Works. Prior to that, I had the uh, D7s from the same company. And before that, we had the black forged wheels that I picked as an option when I got the car. We have wrapped the door handles as well. We got matte black V8 by turbo badges. Those were previously chrome. So pretty much done a chrome delete on the car. And I think it looks 
absolutely amazing. I mean, this car just looks so, so good in black. And with everything black, yeah, it, it's, it's mean, very mean looking. As we get to the front here, the splitter, also from Mode Carbon. Now this grill piece here is actually the stock piece that I had hydro dipped in carbon fiber weave looking thing. Now what I forgot to mention is that because of the new wheel setup, it's no longer staggered as it is uh, in stock format. You have 20s in the rear and 19s up front here, but now we have 20s all around. So they're 20 by 10s up front and 20 by 11s in the rear. 265.30 Michelin Pilot Sport 4S up front, 295.30 Michelin Pilot Sport 4S in the rear and then it's also lowered with KW Haas suspension so the car just sits completely different from a stock AMG. Now I know it's a matter of opinion but this is definitely a whole lot better looking than stock but some people feel otherwise and, and that is completely okay. You have 20% tint on the car as well which just completes the blacked out look for the exterior. But yeah, pretty good trunk space here in uh, the C. I mean, it's a smaller car, so it's not massive, but it's also very practical, which is something that I just absolutely love about this car. It is the full package. I've been on rallies in this car, and it's probably one of the best rally cars you can have. I mean, it's fast, it's practical. A lot of people that go on rallies, they have supercars, and then they have you know luggage and like camera equipment and they can't fit it in their own car they have to use a chase car but when I've done it everything fits in this car and it keeps up with most of the cars as well because it's extremely fast. Being a Mercedes that has a lot of the luxury amenities that we'll talk more about here shortly very comfortable car yeah full package. So the most amazing thing about this car is of course driving it and the way that it sound it's a combination and an experience so that's what we're going to focus on in today's video, of course, but we have to take a look at the interior as well. Because Mercedes does interiors very, very well. We'll just start here quickly uh, by the door. So we have power seats, of course, the headrest is power. We got heated and cooled seats, although these seats are ventilated and they, they suck. They don't really cool you down very much. Burmeister sound system, it's about 670 watts, absolutely phenomenal. Of course, leather all through the car, white contrast stitching. We got Alcantara slash suede here. I have the regular seats in this AMG and I really like them, they're comfortable. This is, I'm actually on my second one. The first one had the performance seats and they of course look 10 times better, but they're not as comfortable. We got AMG sill right here. And as we step into the cockpit here, we got a flat bottom steering wheel thick leather wrapped steering wheel and then there's Alcantara on the sides here and you know I don't wear you know driver's gloves or whatever so it's very worn out it wears out after a while but the driving experience is awesome this being a 2018 we still have analog gauges for 2019 they've updated that to completely digital but I don't mind the analog screens at all we'll start it up here real quick Absolutely phenomenal. I love that sound. We also have a back seat. A little hard for a grown-up to sit comfortably back there, but it's usually just my stepdaughter Sydney that sits back there anyway. Now it comes with this touch pad depending on what interior package you pick, but I actually find myself never using this touch pad. All I use is this rotary dial to kind of navigate through the uh, infotainment system and everything. Um, I love this feature right here. Dynamic select, engine data. I use that a lot. So you can see uh, the horsepower and the torque. Oh, also the transmission temperature and oil temperature right there. An awesome head up display. Although, to be honest, I've found myself that being uh, pretty hard to get used to. I still look at the gauges down here after almost having the car for two years I'm still not used to having a head-up display 
Now the transmission for 2019 is a 9-speed multi-clutch transmission from Mercedes. Now for the 17 and 18 models, it still has the 7-speed, which I don't mind whatsoever. Uh, I don't really understand the need for 9 and 10-speed transmissions. 7-speed transmission for me is perfect. So what we have here is the dynamic select button where you can toggle through different driving modes. Now we went to comfort which shuts the valves. Then we go to sport. Valves are still shut. We go to sport plus. <laughs> and the valves are open. Then we have race. However, you can set an individual mode which I have which is basically sport plus. Um, I have a uh, sport handling mode as one of the options for my individual modes. You can uh, choose that right here as well. Basically what that means is that the car allows a little wheel spin before the traction control system kicks in. Now you can pick here if you want it in manual or automatic transmission. I always drive in manual. Now we got suspension settings here as well. The valve button which should always be on. And then this stupid feature right here which is auto stop start. But that is disabled if you drive the car in Sport Plus. We got a volume button here and then this button is for oh, it's on this side <laughs> pushes out the seat belt for the driver but enough babbling about the interior the most amazing thing about owning this car is driving it the yeah, one thing about this car is that I have yet to get bored of driving it or listening to it, basically just experiencing it every day when I get into it. <laughs> it just has so much character, it has a soul, it's mean, it's angry, it's loud, it just sounds so awesome. If you follow this channel, you know that I'm all about sound. I'm a sound nut. I love cars that sound good. And this car does. One thing about it though is that it is on the heavy side. The other day, I actually weighed the car with myself in it for the first time, and it weighed 4,240 pounds with a quarter of a tank of gas. But the thing moves. It might not be the best track car out of the uh, German Trinity, so to speak, the M3 slash M4 and the Audi RS5, but it's definitely the quickest, maybe not off the line, that would be the RS5 because of all-wheel drive, and it's definitely the best sounding, and in my biased opinion, also very honest opinion, it's the best looking out of the three. Now, Sierra to 60 in the C63 is supposed to be 3.8 seconds. Uh, with a V-Box, I've managed to get four seconds flat, but that is because of traction. Now, my car has more power as well, because of being tuned, but putting the power down to the ground during a launch control, for instance, which we'll do here soon, is pretty hard. But once you get up to speed, I mean, it, it, it's quick. I can just drive around and downshift, upshift, and just listen to the car. I mean, it, again, it sounds so good. That might be a little over the top talk about sound for certain people, but I, I just, I love it. There's something about a car with a V8. Now, AMG, they have a very distinctive sound as well. I mean, I haven't heard a car that sounds like an AMG sounds, and I know that the engineer over in a Falterbach they, they work on this specifically to make it have a unique sound. <laughs> now the transmission shifts lightning quick if you're high up in the RPMs. Yeah, it's fast. It's not 
PDK dual clutch Porsche fast, but it's fast enough. Now I've been on long road trips with this car before being tuned and after tuned. On a highway trip where I was pulled over for speeding, I got 24.2 miles per gallon, which is pretty good for a car with, at that time, 500 horsepower. Post tune with 600 plus horsepower, I get around 21 on the highway if you drive somewhat normal. But day to day use, the car is around 12, 13 miles per gallon. But it doesn't matter. Like, I don't think about stuff like that when I drive this car. It just puts such a gigantic smile on my face every day. But what are some of the issues that we've had with the car? Well, on delivery day, it actually uh, broke. Because you can, you can call it breaking. Because the car wouldn't start. It dragged the battery. And what ended up being wrong with it was a SAM module that sits uh, underneath the rear uh, passenger seat somewhere. It's a signal acquisition module that uh, pretty much wasn't connected properly. So uh, yeah, it dragged the battery. I couldn't open the rear trunk. Part of the rear tail lights were not illuminated. Very weird, but that was a quick fix. And then just recently my front radiator uh, broke as well. Some debris of sort must have pierced the radiator and uh, it was leaking uh, coolant. That was a $1,200 fix, but besides that, with this car, I haven't uh, had any major issues. It's been uh, pure joy most of the time. Now you might notice that the sunroof will uh, go up and down on its own, and it does that depending on what speed you're driving for aerodynamics, I assume. so hard so let's do a launch control here and uh, the way that you engage launch control is you have it in sport sport plus or race put your foot on the brake both paddles in paddle up it grips <laughs> it grips but it does struggle in the beginning that's why it's hard to get that sub four seconds here to 60 time if they would uh, put the formatic system in the C63 that would be a lot of fun because you have the option to have all-wheel drive if you want to and then rear-wheel drive if you want to but the C is only available in a rear-wheel drive Now, let's talk about burnouts. So we're gonna turn the traction control system uh, completely off here. Now the C63 does not come with any kind of line lock or anything like that. So now that it's 71 degrees outside and my tires are sticky, we're just gonna stomp on it in first gear. are sticky now I have slightly wider tires in the rear than stock 295 versus 285 now what you can obviously do is uh, lean on the brake and then uh, do a massive burnout but and this is actually a, a, a tip for potential AMG C63 buyers or current owners I have a friend who owns a car like this and he did a lot of burnout and then one day his diff blew so what Mercedes did was they kind of like scouted him on Instagram and so on and they could see that he's been doing standing burnouts by, you know, having both the brake pedal and the gas pedal completely slammed. And uh, the electronic diff is not made for that. So if they can tell that you've been doing that, it's on you. Just letting everyone know. That's how it works. <laughs> And that's also why I don't really do burnouts anymore in this car, because I've done plenty of them. But 
yeah, just a warning. Mercedes does not like it, and it's kind of weird. They should put a line lock in here because it is basically a German muscle car. So if we talk about wear and tear items, except for tires, which of course depends on how you're driving, uh, brake pads and rotors, and the last time I had it in for service, which was about 2,000 miles ago, I still had 60% left in my pads. So they are phenomenal, great stopping power, but very, very, very bad when it comes to brake dust. And I've mentioned this in thousands of videos before. Uh, and even if you ceramic coat your wheels, like I did on my previous set, it, you know, I mean, might be slightly easier to clean them, but you're still going to have to deal with the brake dust, even if you get the carbon ceramics, because the carbon ceramics on a C63 is only up front and not in the rear. But one of the greatest joys <laughs> when driving this car is when you find an underpass. It is pretty heavy. It's not the best cornering car, but it's not bad either. It hugs the corners pretty well. Now, since my car is lowered as well, every now and then I'll hear a little scrape. But if you keep the suspension settings at their stiffest, you don't really have an issue with that either. So over 21,000 miles, there's been uh, minor problems, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be commenting on what happened to my first AMG. Now, that was a freak of nature. Yes, it did hydrolock. A new engine for a C63 is, by the way, $71,000. So I'd had the first one for seven weeks, and uh, insurance said uh, it's totaled. You'll get a brand new car, and so I ended up with this 18. And as we said in the beginning of the video, uh, I might be giving this car up. Now, I haven't made the final decision yet. My dream is to be able to keep the car, but if I can't do that, I can't do that. And I do want to step up to a supercar, and uh, the car that I'm getting is a Ferrari F12. So one thing that will be very hard, though, is seeing it go, if that's what ends up happening. <laughs> but until that day comes, I'm going to have this smile on my face every time I drive it. <laughs> 